What's up, people? Um, happy Tuesday. Um, hope all you're having a great day so far. Well, 51 years of General Hospital. Today is the official 51st anniversary. I want to say congratulations to all of the cast and crew of GH who do an amazing job on this show for the most part. Um, congratulations to them. 51 years is a long fucking time. And that deserves a round of applause, a standing ovation to be on television from 1963 to current. That that's amazing. That that's a fucking milestone. That right there is amazing. But I was disappointed with this episode. I was I was disappointed because 51 years is a long time. Like, you know what I mean? You have to go big or go home. And I felt like they didn't deliver today. I mean, come on, like where the hell was Luke and Laura? I mean, did, I mean, come on, 51 years. You should have had the Cassadines. You should have had Luke and Laura. You should have had Brenda, Jax, Justice Ward. You, you know, at least a ghost of them. Alan, you should have had the whole damn crew. Whoever you can get, get them. Whatever ghost that you can get, get them. That's what you should have had. Um... I was so disappointed in that because, you know, Luke and Laura, they made history on General Hospital. I remember back in 1981 when they got married, the ratings, they set ratings high with the wedding of Luke and Laura. They set ratings. Ratings went huge for their wedding. I mean, you had kids missing school to watch Luke and Laura get married. That's amazing. Who does that? What couple on a soap can do that? Other than Luke and Laura. I mean, damn, not even Victor and Nikki Newman could pull those type of ratings for their wedding. I mean, my God. And you don't showcase them. I mean, I, I feel like that's fucked up, but I have some big news for you. Big, 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 big news. And this is no laughing matter. This is huge. This is something that some of you were not expecting in a billion years. But I'm only telling you this because I feel like you need upliftment. You need to be uplifted. Um, but the reason this has not been announced publicly is because they're trying to keep this under tight wraps. But I have a source and this source is a thousand percent credible. Steve Burton. Yes, I said it will be back on General Hospital. He got released early from his YNR contract because he spoke with General Hospital backstage, you know, the powers that be at ABC General Hospital, and they came up with the proper contract. So starting July of 2014, you will see Steve Burton back on General Hospital, back in action. And that's the truth. You will be seeing him. The reason they're not going public is because they're trying to make this huge. They don't want people to know until the right time that he's coming back, which I can understand. But my source, thousand percent credible, because that's where I get all my spoilers, my news. And trust me, he's the shit. He's a thousand percent credible. I use this guy for every piece of news I get from GH and he's always right. And this time he's dead on. So Steve Burton will be back. Mid July 2014, he'll be resurrected thanks to Robin Scorpio Drake. She's due back this summer. And when she comes back, it coincides with Steve Burton coming back. So look out for that. And I know this is the answer to all of your dreams to have Sam finally reunited with her husband, but that's what you're gonna get. Seriously. Um, I can't wait to see what's gonna happen with Jason and see when he's gonna, you know, what he's gonna do about Sonny, you know. And the fact that Sonny murdered his brother. Um, anyway, speaking of, let me get down to this episode because it's like four minutes into this video. I haven't even spoken about this episode yet. I'm going to talk about Sonny first. Um, I love the scenes with all three of the Carlys. Laura Wright, Sarah Brown, Tamara Braun. I loved it. In the flashbacks of past episodes and stuff from back in the day. I loved every fucking second of it. My favorite Carly 
And I'm going to be dead honest. My favorite Carly, Sarah Brown, my favorite Carly, hands down. I love Tamara Braun. I love Laura Wright. But Sarah Brown is she had it. And I loved it. And Sarah Brown looks gorgeous. She looks flawless. I mean, look at her. Oh, my God. And Tamara Braun, she's just all three of them are just beautiful, especially, you know, they're just gorgeous. Here it is, 2014, and they're aging like fine wine. Um, and they're all, what, 40? In their 40s? They all look good. I think Tamara Braun is the youngest, I think. I think she is. I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that because I'm not too sure. Um, but, yeah, it was a good scene. Um, what pissed me off is Sonny. <sighs> really, Sonny? So he's begging Carly not to tell Michael literally begging her crying trying to put on his little puppy dog face so and i love the fact that carly didn't promise him nothing and i'm glad she didn't she said that she had to think and i can understand that with carly i just hope that she do tell michael but i can understand her wanting to take a minute to think because michael just lost aj and it's fresh and if she piles this news onto him this, this boy might have a nervous breakdown we never know how he gonna react um, but she can't hold on to this secret too much longer because it's going to ruin her relationship with Michael. And somebody said that Michael, when the truth comes out, he's going to forgive Sonny and forgive Carl. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Michael, I do agree. Michael has a forgiving heart. But can he forgive this? I mean, his father, his biological father, whom he's been getting to know these last two years is dead because of his adopted father. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot to be asking him to forgive. I'm telling you, if he does forgive, I would be shocked, but I don't expect him to forgive them. Well, Sonny, and I'm glad Carly decided, you know, she had to think about it because this is a lot to process. And Sonny sitting there on his hands and knees praying. I'm like, yeah, because all you're worried about is saving your own ass is what you're worried about. Sonny is pissing me off. Um, Monica, I feel so bad for Monica. Oh, speaking of people that we didn't see for the 51st anniversary, where's Tracy? How good she's a part of history on this show. I mean, come on, writers, you could have gave a better 51st anniversary, but I love that Monica, you know, she got a moment to be with her kids, you know, Emily and, and AJ, even though it was their spirit, it was their ghost, but at least she got one last goodbye. You know what I'm saying? Even though I'm sure they'll be back to visit her. But, um, you know, I don't blame Monica for wanting to die, you know, because that's the way Monica feels. Her whole family is dead and she rather not live anymore because she's been through a lot. Um, Monica has been through more shit probably than most people on this show. She's been through bad marriages she's been through cancer remember she had cancer back in 1994 20 years ago she's she's been a cancer survivor for 20 years she's battled alcoholism she's dealt with the deaths of her husband she's dealing with the death of all her kids she's dealing with the death of her father-in-law her grandson and they all died within a few years of each other. And she's still coping with this. And I don't blame her for wanting to just give up. She feels like she has nothing left. But I agree with, with Emily. Monica has so much more to give. Because she still has Michael. She still has Danny. She still has Ned. She still has Dylan. She still has Skye. Even though her and Skye don't get along. But she still has Skye. She still got Lila Ray. Most importantly, she still got Tracy. And, um, you know, so her and AJ, you know, she was proud of AJ and, and this is the big question that I was hoping Monica would have asked AJ, the ghost of AJ, who shot you? And I was so pissed when, cause you could tell AJ wanted to tell her, you could tell, but he told her that when the truth comes out, she's going to be proud of him. But the reason he couldn't tell her was because there's too much to to explain, too many details. And he didn't have time because, you know, he he had to get to heaven. And Monica told him, when you get to heaven and when it's my turn, tell your father to watch out. I was like, wow. So when AJ and Emily left, 
they were standing by the staircase and they were greeted by Lila, Edward, and Alan. But that's how you know Jason not really dead because if Jason was really dead, he would have been greeted by Jason too. But that's how you know Jason not really dead. And like I said, Jason will be back. Um, And I can't wait. So they ascended the staircase and the, the light, they had to walk towards the light. I was like, wow, that was emotional because it, it, to me, it feels like the end of an era. I mean, all the quarter mains are basically dead and it's just the end of an era for me. Um, General Hospital is a shell of what it used to be. It really is. This show is so unrecognizable right now. Too many people, just too many legends getting killed off and it's sad. Not only are they getting killed off on the show, but a lot of them are dead in real life. And that's sad, you know, because it's like a part of history, a big part of history and, you know, your childhood. And, you know, a lot of people grew up watching this show and it's like, you know, it's sad. Um, so anyway, Lucy Co. she is preoccupied with Scott. You know, she keeps thinking of her relationship with Scott and I feel bad for Bobby. Her and Noah broke up over the phone. Apparently, he hooked up with some old flame in, in, in Seattle and him and Bobby broke up. I'm not surprised because Bobby has been in Port Charles the last couple of months. She's been staying in Port Charles the last couple of months. So what kind of relationship is her and Noah having? You know, I don't believe in that long distance relationship. So I kind of figured that eventually they would break up. And that's exactly what happened. Um, So they broke up. She's crying about it. Lucy went to go see Scott to tell him that she made a decision about who she wants to be with. And she chose her husband, Kevin. Which isn't surprising. Um. She chose to be with Kevin instead of Scott, and she told Kevin, I mean, she told Scott that she hopes that they can continue being friends, but Scott doesn't want to be her friend because he feels like he want, he's going to always want more, which is understandable, but the way that he was acting towards her was a little harsh. Scott knew she was married, and the chances of her leaving Kevin for him were slim, and he knew that, so don't get mad about it because she chose her husband. She did what she felt was right, even though I feel like her decision. I don't think she's a 100 percent happy with the choice that she made. I think she loves Kevin, but I think she really loves Scott. And she made the decision to stay with Kevin due to the fact that Kevin is her husband and they've been married for 10 years. And she feels like she owes it to him to stay in this marriage. I feel like her her feelings for Scott are always going to be there. But I feel like she made a decision based on other reasons instead of what's really in her heart. So the whole Scott and Lucy thing, I feel like it's not over yet. I do hope Kevin find out that she's been screwing around with her ex-husband behind his back. That I do hope. And I think it's probably going to come out probably at the nurse's ball. Um. So apparently Felicia is not happy with the mayor and her job. So Max suggested that Felicia run as new mayor hell no hell to the no i cannot see felicia as the mayor of poor charles lord help us oh speaking of people that were not on this episode for the 51st anniversary where the hell is anna devane duke lavery we ain't seen no scorpios we like only scorpios we seen was felicia and mac where the hell is anna duke i'm mad robert isn't here like damn this is the 51st anniversary where are the big name players Oh, my God. Um. So, yeah, it, it was just a crazy ass episode. What else did I miss? Is was I'm trying to think what else happened in this episode? I think that's it. That's really all that really happened in this episode. Really? Um, I am so mad that tomorrow we have to see Franco. I thought he was gone. Now we got to see this weirdo back on the show again. Um. Anyway. I forgot to tell all of you. Remember how I said Jason was coming back in July? April Fools. I'm sorry. I just had to do that to you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, 
I thought it would be a very good April Fool's prank because I, I figured some people would buy into what I'm saying if I was dead serious about it and I was adamant about it. I know somebody gonna be like, you motherfucker. I'm sorry, but seriously, April Fool's, I really am sorry. I just had to do it to somebody because I didn't play a prank on nobody yet. So I really had to do this. I was like, I was thinking about it all day. I was like, what could be a good prank? And I was like, Steve Burton coming back to General Hospital. That would be the best prank. Anyway, I'm sorry to do that to you. Trust me, if, if he was really coming back, trust me, I would have been over the fucking moon about it. But nah, he's not coming back as far as I know. But uh, <laughs> sorry about that. I had to do it to you. But anyway, I hope all you have a great day. Um, I hope I'm not forgetting to discuss something. But I hope all you have a great day. I will see all of you tomorrow. Have a great day. Once again, sorry.